Oh, what a feel-good breakfast show. Hashtag we are six. Hashtag espresso birthday. And it's also Travel Tuesday, or Tuesday travel time as we like to call it. And this morning, we're exploring a nation which is frequently nicknamed El Cocodrilo, which literally means alligator in Spanish. A name that was derived from the aerial view of this country. And if you're thinking what I'm thinking, you can guess what this is. Yes, it's the largest Caribbean island of Cuba. And we welcome via Skype from New York travel expert Vito Echevarria to share his insights of this captivating part of the world. Vito, thank you so, so much for joining us. Um, firstly, let me ask you, what do you think makes Cuba such an attractive destination? Well, the first thing, it has that time capsule feel to it. You have to remember the, the charm, the first thing people look at is the 1950s American cars are very much buzzing around the streets of Havana these days. So, I mean, the first thing people look at is that time capsule feel to it. Obviously, the country's vibrant culture and music is another huge draw. Um, obviously, you have your share of cigar aficionados also. So, I mean, Cuba is a so-called bucket list destination for those folks in particular. So, I would say those are among the reasons why people are drawn to Cuba in the first place. Yeah. And what, was, what would you say are some of your top travel tips when visiting Cuba? Well, I mean, you know, it, it varies from, you know, touring around Old Havana. You know, yeah. you have various sites there, ranging from the uh, the fortress there, you know, built during the Spanish colonial era to fight off the uh, British and other pirates uh, back in those days, uh, to Ernest Hemingway's uh, hangout, which is known as uh, La Bodeguita de Medio. Uh, that's yeah. another popular uh, draw for tourists. So you have that. Then, of course, you have the natural charm. You have uh, two major beach uh, destinations. You have uh, Varadero, which is kind of like Cuba's answer to Cancun. And they have uh, Cayo Coco, which is another huge uh, you know, destination for beachgoers. Yeah, but I mean, when it comes to travel, there are always do's and don'ts. So when it comes to Cuba, what would you say are the do's and don'ts? Okay, a major don't for international travelers would be, if possible, do not drive in Cuba. Oh. Um, because what happens is if one gets into a car accident, uh, you know, the local justice system prevents people from leaving the country until the issue is resolved. Um, so we recommend that, you know, if people are going to, let's say, rent a car, which a certain can, uh, they should also get a driver, yeah. uh, you know, just in case they get into any situations there. Yeah, somebody who understands how to navigate their way around the city and the place as well. But what about, uh, you know, let's talk rands, cents, dollars, money. Is Cuba an expensive destination to visit? Well, yeah, from a South African perspective, first of all, you're gonna, if you're coming from Cape Town, you're going to be flying from Cape Town to, let's say, Paris, or Amsterdam and take a connecting flight to Havana. So yeah. because of that, a round trip ticket from uh, Cape Town to Havana runs in the range of 2,000 US dollars. Um, oh. uh, you know, then you have uh, the regular hotels. Um, you know, you can get a package uh, through us, Travelusion.com, let's say for six nights, you know, running in the range of se close to 700 uh, US dollars. Um, I will say this though, um, yeah. people also have the option of pursuing what they call bread and breakfast accommodations, which are known locally as Casas Particulares. Yeah. Believe it or not, such accommodations run as low as uh, 30 US dollars a night. Uh, okay. So that's definitely an option for uh, budget travelers. Okay, so you can definitely then negotiate your way around the finances there. And lastly, is there anything else one needs to consider before traveling to Cuba? Well, I mean, I wouldn't, you know, be too concerned with all that because that's more of an issue for us Americans because for those of us, we have to have a special reason uh, to go to Cuba to begin with, unlike the, the rest of you guys, including South Africans, you can just go on a tourist visa, which is relatively easy to get. Um, the real issue is, um, you know, before going out there, you know, one should prepare to, to bring certain items along, especially items you find in a drugstore, everything from, you know, aspirins uh, to deodorant, you know, all these different items, because, you know, because we still have a, a trade embargo, the United States, you know, against Cuba. Yeah. Uh, there's certain things are still pretty hard to find, or, or if, they, if you do find them, they're very expensive uh, in Cuba. So I recommend people bring along whatever drugstore items they need before boarding that plane. To well, thank you very much, man. It looks like a, a definite, fantastic travel destination to have some great adventures at. I think I'll add it to my bucket list. And thank you so much to Vito for joining us and giving us those very useful travel tips. You can find more on their website, travolution.com.